Hey everyone, uh, Stephen Pope here. Just wanted to let you know that we had some technical issues on the recording of this episode. We fixed them to the best of our ability, but just know if you hear any problems, it's probably us, not you. Uh, next episode should be a lot smoother, and we'll be going from there. So, welcome to the Uncanny Valley. In this world, nightmares lurk. They hide in our neighborhoods, walk our streets, wear our faces, but they are not us. They're the world's best kept secret, and we are going to find them. Welcome to Uncanny Valley Cancer Cell. Last time we ended with JD being knocked out <laughs> by an old friend. And this time we will begin with JD waking up to a bucket of water to the face. <clears throat> it's a September night in a rural town of Manascus, Nebraska. It's a little bit cold. As you take a look at your surroundings, you find yourself, the first thing you notice is the smell of, of livestock and the sensation of dirt sort of coming into your nostrils and, and making you cough as you take in a deep breath upon waking. You slide your eyes open through the water and you see shafts of light creeping their way through boards in a barnyard, uh, a barn, not a barnyard. And uh, as you look, you see railings and you ascertain you are on the upper floor of a large farmhouse barn. Can I move? And when you threw the water at me. <laughs> when you attempt to move, you feel that your arms have been attached to the arms of the chair you are sitting in with coarse rope that, that itches and, and sort of rug burns you a little the, the harder you strain. And uh, from behind, you hear pacing footsteps. Uh, uh, oh, good. Yes. You are awake. <laughs> yeah, good. Just imagine my surprise as I come out from my feasting frenzy. And who do I scent on the wind but that delectable little snack of a man from the laboratory. <coughs> he paces around you in a circle and you see him standing in front of you, a sort of dark silhouette made by the light coming through the barn from some distant street light. He puts his hands in his, the pockets of a long black duster and uh, looks at you and with a very wolfish sort of smirk. <clears throat> Quick question, are my, are my feet also restrained? Yes. Okay. Your feet are tied to the legs of the chair. <clears throat> what? Nothing to say? I mean... Kind of up for listening right now. <laughs> <laughs> you had such an attitude down in the lab. <laughs> well, I mean, I also wasn't, you know, tied to a chair in a barn in the lab. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I come to you, little morsel, with a bargain. Okay. See, as you may be aware, my kind cannot move during the daylight. <clears throat> yeah. And I find myself very far from my home, from my spheres of influence. Okay. And with my children unable to even stand, let alone speak or walk. So you'll understand, he says, as he comes around the other side of the chair and stands in front of you. And seemingly from nowhere, uh, a sort of vial appears in his hands, a long test tube-like vial spinning that he spins between his fingers. So I find myself in need of safe transport. And I happen to have something of yours. And he holds it towards you. And now that it's held in front of him, the light from behind shines through the glass container and you see what is unmistakably blood. <clears throat> okay. Are you aware of the properties of vampire blood? N no. <laughs> They're quite fascinating on the human, you see animals as well. He continues walking, he's behind you again. 
When blood is taken from a human into the body of a vampire, it takes on special properties, which we call vitae. It, pound, it feels our power. But when it's given back, it also transfers some of that power to the bearer. And then... <laughs> well, it's a no-strings-attached agreement, don't you understand? <coughs> I'm simply offering you a piece of my power in exchange for safe passage back to my ancestral home. Yeah, I feel like there's got to be something more to that. Like, you know, the part where you kill me at the end or he, something something like that. He, uh, from, <clears throat> from behind the chair, a boot collides with the back and it <clears throat> pushes you up on just the front two legs. And you are facing the floor and unable to, to protect yourself. Do not make light my offer, mortal. I mean, this I'm is a, the most generous offer. I don't say that. I'm just saying, you know, it's not like that simple either. It's not also like I have like you know a bunch of like light proof stuff to move you in. Like, wouldn't you be best to just do it in like little bursts at night? He then, lets the chair like, swing I'm back sure. down onto four legs. Uh, you make a good point. You see, I've done some research in the last few hours. You were here with some kind of company, and you had a, a machine, which I am aware is called a bus. Yeah, we have, we have a bus, but lots of light comes into the bus, so... Well, there is a luggage compartment, no? One which perhaps you could move some things out of, or <clears throat> move some things into. Understand! I mean, and he, he leans back with his hands still in his pockets, giving you a sort of look down <clears throat> his nose. I'm, all, I'm putting my life in your hands here, mortal. All you need to do to kill me and mine is simply open the container. I am putting quite a lot into this bargain, some, what is it, skin in the game. And all I ask, I mean, you, you don't have to take this back. I could keep it. He spins the vial some more. All I ask is that you allow me to do it. Uh, I mean, I guess... Since I am in no way being compelled to do this in any other way, that you have a deal. He crouches down <laughs> in the in front of the the chair, and he's so tall that even crouched, his head still comes solidly to your shoulder. And he looks up at you and goes, "Good. So, would you like this with or without the offer of free, no strings attached power?" Well, I mean, I, I, I mean. I'd like to have my my blood back from you, but if I could just, like, pocket it and keep it for later, maybe <sighs> That I cannot do. Yeah. That I doesn't... cannot allow this to fall into anyone's hands. <clears throat> they will be effectively a business partner of mine. They will have a piece of me within them. You can <laughs> see where that would be undesirable. Yeah, yeah, I see where that'd be undesirable, but why, why would you want me to have that? That doesn't make... Much sense. Because, foolish boy, I need you. I mean, yeah, but, I mean, you've already kind of, you know, done the coercing. Unless that's going to, like, help you do something else, then, you know. <sighs> Fine. He slides <laughs> it back up his sleeve and he goes, whatever. He takes out a knife, a little Bowie knife. He cuts the cords and he goes... If we have a bargain, I will simply keep it. You do not need it. I just, I figured it might add some incentive for your loyalty. Well, I mean, it just feels like that's a weird thing to offer, you know, some of your power to just some random human who you don't plan on seeing again, potentially, and stuff like well, that. Well, his uh, <laughs> hand comes to the back of your neck and grips it rather tight. Let us not have any miscommunication. You will not tell any any of this arrangement. It is strictly between you and I. Oh, and it? I do have the power I mean, that, to I mean, do with you as I please. Yeah, it is by my that. will and my generosity that you have this level of freedom. It is by my trust, mortal. He lets you go. I mean, I just don't see why, like, I mean, like, you know that there's, like, a bunch of people around that bus stuff. I'm not, like, the only person who ever goes to the compartments for things. Then you will have to make it so that no one else does, won't you? I mean, 
I mean, that'd be like, I mean, I guess that'd be the idea. But it's not like that easy. I can't be by the bus all day. I'll look weird. Well, then I suppose I'll just have to kill you right now. <laughs> yeah, see, that's that's the part. I'm not saying we can't. I'm just saying, like, there's better solutions, potentially, like, there's just, that's not, like, the only way, like, we I mean, like, I mean, there has to be something else to help, like, keep you in there. Like, could you, like, I don't know. <laughs> Is there a counter offer somewhere in there? <laughs> not particularly. <laughs> But uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, reject the dying offer and go with the first one, I guess. Go with the first one. <laughs> See, now this is why I liked you. You're so <laughs> arrogant. <laughs> and uh, as he smiles in you, you can see you notice this very much because it's something you've recently learned to fear. You see things descend from the gums above his incisors and he he walks up very close to you within arm's length and he goes so what do you propose we do uh well you know i think we just you know you just follow me back and then we'll just <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll get you in the thing and then i'll just kind of like and we'll my like, children m- we'll like mess the, with the lock on the thing so it looks like it's stuck or something this is agreeable I will meet you at this bus with my cargo and you will arrange for us to be locked inside Mm. until such time as it is safe for us to leave agreed? Uh, okay this bus (laughs) (laughs) and then he sort of he gives you an appraising glance he sighs and pulls out the vial of blood and sticks it in one of the pockets of your tactical vest <laughs> and very daintily closes the Velcro and rubs rubs your chest gently and he goes, as a little bit of insurance. And then he walks out. And about then, your phone rings. <clears throat> Hello? JD, shit. Sorry, dude, we got caught up in stuff. Where are you at? Mm, no clue. No clue? Yeah, no clue. You didn't stay over at the, the RV? No. Went to town for something. Oh. Do you see any sort of landmarks? Uh, Darla and I are getting in the car right now. I see a barn. Okay. <laughs> um, did he say he saw how, a barn? How did you... Not right now. Uh, is there any... Do you see any street signs or anything you can walk <laughs> no out? No clue. I'll call I'll, 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 I'll text you the details. Okay. <laughs> yeah, call me back. We're we're heading into town at least. Well, Jesus Christ, this is Nebraska. That could be anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just go outside and go so around I'm, I'm, until I find out where I am. Yeah, I'm going to take grab or grab the the squirt guns and or whatever. she's got to you want to do you prefer the taser or the the squirt guns? No, I'm going to keep the taser. I'm going to use the squirt gun. <laughs> Perhaps he's near the center pivot irrigator of the town. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Garrett. Or Tennessee Beck. Or Nebraska Beck. I want to take his... Can we take his You're facts losing away from him? <laughs> Garrett is no longer allowed to use uh, Google. Uh, okay, I'm going gonna, gonna to resolve JD first. So JD, you leave the <laughs> barn and look around. And uh, at first it is very bewildering, but you do see the source of the light which was coming through the barn. It is the very light, very white uh, street lamps of a Walmart that you were heading to. You're actually really not very far at all. Oh, okay. It is distant, but you can clearly see it lit up like a Christmas tree in this otherwise dark rural town. So you can at least head your way towards that landmark, and from there you'll be able to navigate anywhere in the town that you have been. As for the rest of you, uh, what do you guys want to do to try and find your teammate? Uh, I'm just. Are there, were you the one with Drive D, or was it? Uh, me? I don't have it. We no. The thing about Drive is everybody can drive. 
Yeah. It's just anyways. You need dots in it if you're gonna do like some Jason Statham shit. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna hop hop in the car and just start driving into town until we get a text message, and then mm-hmm. we're gonna go there. Well, I'm gonna in the meantime basically say I'm at the Walmart. In, in okay, yeah. In the meantime, I just want to continuously be running unseen sense to see mm-hmm. if I pick up on that feeling I had when the vampires were around. Mm-hmm. And in the meantime, I'm also going to basically just be texting them exactly what happened, but also hiding the screen of my phone very thoroughly. In what way? I'm just going to be keeping it to myself. <laughs> All right. Someone have to be at some kind of crazy angle. You can just keep your hands around it in text, keep it angled at myself. There's just not an angle to see anything on it. And I'm keeping the messages rather short, but uh, I'm saying that, like, Hey, don't say anything, but I met our friend <laughs> that we met in the basement of the place. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you will receive this yeah. as a text message. The bitey one. Oh, so <clears throat> this comes so, after we know where he is? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah, you're I'm, driving I'm, on your way to pick him up. I'm, yeah, he said he was where he was I'm first. crushing the accelerator. And so I texted back, uh, it's like, what do you mean, our friend? Is it the mean lady, or is it, is it Mr. Bitey? Like, I, know, I said, I said, I said the, the Bitey one. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that I was a second it. text that came in right <laughs> after the, <laughs> the, 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 right after she one. sent the, the question. Well. Yeah, I, I'm. Is I, he still around? I just said, like, Maybe. Might be close. Well, I'll pull out my taser. Let's, yeah, no, I've, I've got the squirt gun. Don't be too suspicious. <laughs> okay, so don't be too suspicious. Do you right. tell me about that? Because I'm not text. I'm not reading while I'm driving. Uh, Would Vic be getting so, this text as well? Yes. Okay. So I'll look over to uh, to Mason, and I'm like, well, uh, so uh, I think there may be a little bit more to the, the he got lost scenario than he... Uh, yeah, he paid for you over the phone. I didn't say I got lost. Uh, <laughs> I said I didn't know where I was. <laughs> it's the same thing. No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> not if you ever not known where you were and not gotten lost. That's literally what it means. I was made lost. There's a big difference. <laughs> well, semantics aside, I think that uh, you you should just just play it cool. All right, we're gonna pick him up. And he's gonna get in the van. All right. I'm all right. Slow down a little bit. And then we'll talk about it later. But just be cool. He is probably going well, to follow I'm, us. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna do like a pedestrian speed. But we're still scared of a vampire being in the town. So I'm not gonna pretend like we're not trying to get him quickly. Sure. I mean, you you go up. You navigate successfully to the Walmart. You've already been there twice today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jesus Christ, if I ever have to go to this Walmart again. Uh, JD, where are you waiting? It's a 24 hour Walmart, so you could be There's inside or outside or whatever. Line, probably. In the deli eating fried chicken. It's because I have weapons on my person. I just keep going until you tell me otherwise. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, he finds you standing outside and uh, you hop in the van. Uh, I'm going to have him get out of the driver's seat. I'm driving. You feeling all right? I'm driving. <laughs> Can I get a read on him? Well, Other you did, than he's scared? You did roll a five um, for Unseen Sense. Yeah. You sense vampire shit all over him. <laughs> I'm just going to let him get in the driver's seat. But what happened? Like, we're driving now. But what happened? <clears throat> well, I went into the Walmart... And I got a machete, and then I decided I didn't want to walk all the way back. Gives you a look like, are you dumb? <laughs> like, uh, Yeah, I give him a look like, play it cool. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about this later. Can I unseen sense just, beyond I'm, where we're I'm like just, in, I'm just, I'm just putting car. into my phone, it's your immediate shut answer. up okay. about it, and then holding it up to him wherever he is. <laughs> So there's a phone glowing in your face that says, shut up about it. I'm just going to be looking out the window a lot, and that's it. So, uh, 
who else is there? Is, I know these two have said they're there. Wolf and Vic, are you? I as already, well? I already know what I, what Vic is going to be doing, and I'm waiting until everyone else gets back before I say what he's doing. Okay, uh, Wolf. Uh, well, as long as uh, as long as Wolf is talking about it, then how m- wait? How many squirt guns do we get? I think two. we got two. two. Okay, then Vic, I have one. The, Vic is gonna hold the the like actual gallon of holy water and just like kind of cradle it in a, in his lap and watches the door. <laughs> like it's a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> so where are you going, JD? We're gonna go back to the. <laughs> to the motel where the, where the booth is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so you go back and uh, you arrive there. Everything We're driving is, very normally. <laughs> everything is pretty much as you left and it. Very unpanicked. It's a it's a dingy small town motel. Uh, there's. All of the productions, trucks, and vans parked outside, with the exception of the one you've been driving. Uh, half of the motel has been rented out by various crew members, and all their cars are there. Um, and, of course, there's a large tour van, which you all have not had cause to use yet, uh, but which you recall them saying uh, at the beginning of production you would travel in yeah. when we were done with this location. And it's still it's still late, right? Yeah, it's um, it's about... I'd say it's about 9 o'clock at this point. Uh, 9 p.m.? 9 p.m., yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'd basically just have us all, you know, go back to one of our rooms and thing and just hang out. Okay. And we all are. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to text to just talk about normal stuff, but use text to talk about this. <laughs> Capitals. <laughs> when we walk back into the hotel room... When we close the door, I just want to give a little in the back of the head. What you were it? like nobody else knows that I know you're covered in vampire aura, but I just want to just want to be sure. Just a little with the squirt gun. Yep, it's water. He's okay. already wet. All right. <laughs> as soon as the first person enters the hotel room, Vic is going to attempt to splash them with water. From the from the gallon jar. <laughs> so I walk not into like the empty room. It, not oh. like empty it. Not like empty it. Okay, go so like, if, if that happens, you don't get sprayed. Let's play this <laughs> no, no, out. No, no, no. I mean, no, you already declared that. I want yeah, yeah. to. Uh, it's like, no, it's like, hey, you got me a little bit of wet, uh, a little bit wet from the back. <laughs> and then he gets splattered in the face Why by the more holy What do I need water? to roll? What do I you need don't need to roll for that. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. It's like point blank range from a jug. You're fine. I think it would be pretty funny if he missed. Go for it. Just on the off chance that you crit fail. Okay, sure. So JD, already damp, uh, is now covered in holy water all the way around. No, you did not. Fine, I succeeded. You you hit him pretty well. Fine. And all all that, I'll be like, geez, we run into a vampire one time, and now you guys are all crazy. One time's enough. (laughs) This this is the the number one concern of ours for the next couple days. So, yeah. (laughs) I text, like, I told you to not be suspicious. Just all caps. (laughs) With, like, 30 exclamation points. You didn't knock. Damn it. So, next time that I have a run-in with anything that, uh, you know, is the big V word, just splash my feet or something. I'm, I'm just... Sure, well, I'll play. I'll right, pull text. out my phone. <laughs> what happened? Well, you read a vampire. Basically, exactly what happened. I went into town to eat the machete. I saw him and he knocked me unconscious. He tied me to a chair. He made a deal with me. I told him we'd put him in this compartment, pretend like the lock's broken, blah, 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 blah. Do you <laughs> tell me about the blood? I mean, I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> and then I have this little word with my, my question mark. Blood that was also in his body. I don't know. <laughs> okay. And like list, 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 can list, I, list. Can I see that file? I mean, you say something and we have the curtain. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Can I see that file? Yeah, just. Okay, I'm just. I'm going to go to the bathroom. And we can talk about whatever. You know, and I'm going to put like. one, talk dro- about radical one, one drop of the blood on the sink, <laughs> pork it again, and then put 
a little bit of the holy water on the on the blood. Um, it okay. doesn't really react. It's just watery, okay. congealed, gross-looking okay. blood. Human or... blood. We're good. All right. Hand, hand it back for now. We don't know what we're going to do with it. You, you come back in and uh, and Vic is doing a Radical Rex voice just to like brighten the mood. I don't know how to deal with this. <laughs> <laughs> Man, things have gotten crazy. Do you stick a Thor's boy? So that's an established character now, I guess. <laughs> do you think you can trick... Do you think you can make him believe that we believe you? I don't know. Can you can you make him think that? I yeah, I I'm <laughs> I'm not so good with deceiving people. Do you think you can do that? Well, just stay out of the way, everybody. Stay out of the way. Don't go check the compartment. If it's daylight, we can just open it up. Yeah, I mean, I'm with JD here. I feel like we should just do it because if he that guy could just like find us and murder us in our sleep, and we should really keep him on our good side. I know that's probably Aiden and abetting, and you know I've had family members go to jail for that. But I feel like in this circumstance, it's probably a little bit uh, understandable. Okay. Well, well, what do you no, think we're going to no. do? We're do trying... Think... We're it's all text. We're, all text. We're trying to kill it, yes? Or at least get away, yes? <laughs> okay. Once it's in the compartment, we can wait till daylight and open it. Okay, so... Okay, but no, no. We I... ne- if, if it doesn't believe JD and attacks him, we might need to go get a, go get him. We have some weapons now. We're going to distribute these <laughs> after he takes a shower and changes clothes to get the smell of holy water off. It doesn't really smell like anything. It's okay, water. it's just yeah. water, dude. I don't know if I know that. Um, Give him a big hug. Well, considering your that your friend just got doused in it, you you can determine it doesn't smell like anything. Okay. <laughs> you might uh, also want to. Must might want to forward all of these to Charlie. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, Vic, keep your jug. Darla, you have a taser. Wolf, do you prefer taser or water gun? I have a water gun. I have okay, a water gun. But Vic, you take a taser also. We're going yes. to use the night vision on my camera to watch. JD will follow your lead. But I think we should, I don't know. I, I Personally, I think this is a bad idea. I, I know that, that we've been fairly successful in evading you know, all of the crazy supernatural shit that we've run into in the but, last couple of days. But but when we were talking to Charlie in his in his van, he mentioned that these things tend to run in packs. They tend to have families. What if we piss them off? I don't want more vampires to come in here and... That was werewolves. Werewolves run in packs. <laughs> but werewolves have families, groups, but if, lineages. Okay, but... but while we're having this conversation, I want to make a bogus conversation with Vic loudly. Or sure. Room volume plus about how we should order a pizza because we're fucking hungry. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Also, um, put like put a movie on the. On the yeah, TV. a loud radio would work. <laughs> yeah, well. just any any number of. So things. that we're not just silent. <laughs> yes. Just. But. These things, uh, it was my understanding, and I've read a lot of Anne Rice novels because you know, nineties. But, but it seems like they have friends. I don't want, like I said, I don't want some vampires coming in and breaking into my room and then make me a vampire and then whatever. I don't want that to happen. So maybe we should just help them out. Just dump them off in the city and then be done with it. Wash our hands of the whole thing. Yeah. It's yeah. over text. <laughs> There's... If he can use us to help him with one thing, wouldn't he just do it again? Well, obviously, once we drop him off in a random city, he's never going to need us again because he's going to get back to his family or whatever. That. I don't think we can kill this thing. This thing, uh, he was fighting those hunters or whatever well, the hell they were. Charlie said the sun will take care of it. We just have to incapacitate him with tasers and water, stab him through the chest with anything. 
and then wait for the sun to come out. Well, we're going to do that right in front of the whole film crew? It's at night, right now. No, I mean... This gets resolved tonight. No, you're talking about in the sunlight. Mm -hmm. Well, we could... We're going to steal the van, we're going to put him in it, and then we're going to dump him out in the sunlight right in front of God and everybody, and then stake him in a a parking lot or somewhere? That doesn't make any sense. The sun should kill him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't like, think we're going to stake him at all. I think he's going to climb in. Vic, do you want breadsticks? On his own. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to stay away from carbs. Okay. Uh, Sorry, there's a real dose of reality here. Yeah, let's get some extra cheese. Yeah, yeah. Can I get... I like meat on my pizza. Just a, a pepperoni. Can we, get, can we get white sauce instead of red sauce? No pineapples. <laughs> Pine, pineapples on the side. White sauce. One small meatloaf. It just doesn't go on pizza. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I, I, li- listen. I, this plan doesn't make any sense. Maybe I'm just not getting it, but it doesn't make any sense. Maybe we should just dump him, you know, dump him out where he wants to go, and then never talk to him again. Okay, he wants us to take him. Where did he want us to take him? I don't know. Actually, he never mentioned it. <laughs> For all we know, he wants us to take him down to Mexico. It could be really far away. And then we lose our, our jobs, and we lose our chance to fix any of this shit. Well, if he murders us, we're going to be dead and not employed anyway. Guys, this thing is going to need to eat. Like, how often do vampires need to eat? Well, we don't know. Maybe he ate it's those hunters. So, well, he said he ate a lot before. But if he can ambush us he that easily, up. we just slipped <laughs> up once tonight. He could come back and get, a, get JD again, get any of us again. We should try and resolve this. <laughs> yes. Dot, 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 dot. <laughs> All I'm saying is that you guys can get the garlic butter crust. I'm just not going to eat it. <laughs> I am trying like to stay slim. I'm not as young as I used to be. Thing. <laughs> yeah, let's do you know, it. I think I'm with Vic on this one. Can, maybe it, we shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't have so much gluten. That might be bad. Uh, you know, I, the camera I, puts on ten pounds. Do you like? Not really. Do you, I can just get an extra large. I'm not salad. saying I'm allergic to it, but maybe I shouldn't eat it because I don't want those toxins in my body. Do you prefer the Asian spice wings, or would you like some dry rub? Dry rub. Yeah, let's get some dry Should rub wings from that, the for the low carb people. <laughs> This is a conversation going on. I don't know. Well, presumably those hunters that were in the the the, the lab for starters. That and God knows who else. And maybe some people. And you, and you mentioned that it has family. How big is its family? Well, its family is just those two that we saw in the tanks. Yeah. That well, we, we know don't know of. that. Why does he want to go somewhere? He, he said that he was far away from his contacts, so it's just got to be <laughs> well, them, yeah? But who are his contacts? <laughs> well, right now, right now, he could be anywhere around us thinking anything with us needing to do this whole thing. <laughs> Either he's going to expect me to do something tonight, and so unless we do something tonight, we're going to have to fight him tonight. So let's get him in the compartment. Get it to daytime, and then we can go somewhere and we can discuss while he is contained. But what if he tries to bite you? Well, I mean, he could have he could have done that easily. Yeah, but he could change his mind. <laughs> well, I but, mean, but if he doesn't, if I don't, he then up. he almost certainly will bite me, or just kill him. We saw how strong that thing was. I don't. The only reason those enforcers, hunters, I, I doubt. I, I I doubt he drug me all the way here to try to kill me. That just seems pointless. I feel like he could kill any of us at any time he wanted to, especially if he's eaten recently. Well, well if, he can't really do that if it's in the middle of the day, and he's in that little compartment. If what Char- Charlie said is right, we should be safe as long as we're holed up, but we don't we can't keep doing that. So we need to resolve this in one way way more or the other. We got to try and get him in the compartment no matter what we want to do. I'm just saying I don't think I don't think we can subterfuge our way through the whole the whole the whole crew. I don't know what we're going to do to a get our 
the people, the film crew that is also using that van not to use that compartment. And then B, and the B, where where the hell are we gonna pull them out in the middle of the day? What are we gonna do? We're gonna drive it for a little bit, and then what? Separate from the rest of the the the, the caravan? Where the hell is that gonna? What, how is that even gonna work? Uh, Vic, uh, Vic wants is going to just send kind of like a big block, like yeah. like you guys notice it when it comes in. The best thing that we could possibly do is go along with the plan that the vampire laid out right now because it's dark. We can't fight it right now. And if we get it into a space where we know it's going to be vulnerable, then we can just go from there and we'll have more time to plan. And we'll have more time to plan. Uh, when we... Uh, uh, we'll, we'll have more time to plan once he, once he's in there. It, this putting the putting the vampire in that space would just put us in the best position any way we go. If we if we plan to go along with it, great. If we plan to not go along with it, then uh, then great. He's in a he's in the best p- position for us then. Okay. Well, and then out loud he said he says so. That is one small meat lovers, one medium chicken Florentine with stuffed crust, and two large salads. You forgot the dry rub uh, lemon pepper? Right, yeah, dry rub lemon lemon pepper Lemon pepper sounds real good, but if they have barbecue, I'm always going to go for barbecue. Okay, everyone be quiet. I'm going to put the order in. (laughs) So do you deliver? Guys, it's too late for delivery. We're going to have to go pick it up. Well, hey, maybe JD can take the van and go pick it up for us. JD, can you do that, please? I need to sleep. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I need to get my beauty dress. I need to do, like, a facial mask. I got that charcoal that pulls out the stuff from my pores, you know? So. Oh, that... oh, do you want to do it with me? Yeah, Wait. let's do it. Can I join? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going I'm to look over at JD. I'm going to be like, you just need some cash, or do you need anything else? Just just the cash. All right. Um, let's all pull in. I'm going to give him... Buckle, how much is the total? <laughs> <laughs> The total is sixty-eight seventy-five with the driver. Bullshit Jesus. in Nebraska! I have fed so many people at my house pizza on the weekends. Jesus Christ! In, in our original campaign, we had all of our production meetings in our place, and I fed them pizza. It is expensive to get pizza for sex. Yeah, but this is not LA pizza. This is middle of Nebraska yeah. pizza. Here's fifteen bucks. <laughs> That's that must be some good pizza. It was a lot. All right. Was it good? Okay, though? because it's. Because it's not highfalutin pizza, you all pay forty eight. Well, uh, okay, better. if I may yes. make a request, can we good call job the team pizza place we ordered from highfalutin? Yeah, pizza. the pizza place is officially named highfalutin pizza. Highfalutin pizza. Okay, I will drive all right, well, myself. Actually, it's, it's lowfalutin pizza now. <laughs> imaginary money on imaginary pizza. Are we proud of ourselves? Yes. Is anyone else giving him money for the imaginary pizza, or am I the only one forking up fifteen dollars? Listen, I just bought a lot of votive candles with Jesus' face on it. I don't really have a whole lot of money to spare. He spent ten dollars. <laughs> ten dollars saved is not ten dollars wasted. Fine, I'll, okay. Vic, Vic will throw in. Vic will throw in fifteen too. Okay, I'll <laughs> take care of the last fifteen. Less <laughs> eighteen. You're gonna making be so a broke by payday. <laughs> I still have money. Got thirty bucks to live until I don't know when. I need to go back to the Walmart and get some ramen. It's it's Sunday. You have thirty bucks to live until Friday. Yeah, we, we gotta got, get some we got, ramen. We got crap services. We can live off of that. Yeah, they're gonna feed us. It's not yeah, like I mean, you will be fed meals a day, yeah, assuming you show up. Yeah. So. Anyway. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I guess I'm gonna go out and I'll start up the van, and then I'll. Uh, I'll pull like around to the corner, and then I'll like stop it, As and then I'll like run back out to the butts. Okay. And then like start like. But how long do you think you all were talking? <clears throat> it was probably like. Thirty minutes, maybe. Thirty minutes at most. Uh, by the way, when he leaves, I text uh, Charlie what's going on. Generally speaking. Um. Okay. Uh. Strangely, Charlie doesn't answer. Okay. Charlie's dead. They hate Charlie. Uh, you wave your hands, oh, JD, God. and nothing nothing happens. <laughs> they apparently okay. have to <laughs> So I'll go back to the van and I'll go and I'll get the pizza. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you drive and uh, you have the same sort of creeping, uncomfortable sensation. And you're, you can't really know if, if well, it's because someone's <laughs> watching you or if because you're just paranoid. Um, 
But you you do, you pick up the pizza from a sad, dank little, you know, speck of light on, on a Nebraska hill and bring it all back and safely arrive <coughs> well, back at the I'll, hotel room. I'll, I'll stop around that, like, like, same corner and, like, get out and do the same thing again where I'm, like, like, pointing at, like, the side of the van that's, like, away from the motel. And I'll, like, move some of the stuff to the other compartments. Okay, um, so when you do that... Enough, enough room to fit whatever size he is <laughs> into it. So when you do that, a, uh, a rather short, like, 5'6 guy with sort of scruffy blonde hair, uh, clean-shaven, walks out uh, from the, the sort of brush. Um... You got a you got a decent look. He you recognize him as what was previously the uh, scraps of a human in the right tube in the research institute. Oh shit! He reconstructed. Vitae, bitches! You <laughs> <Okay>. Wolverine. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> and he uh, he sort of nods at you, and he he looks over and he goes, "So that's the bus." This is the bus. <laughs> He sort of slides over. He's wearing uh, much more casual clothes, a sort of a windbreaker and some jeans that are far too large for him and, and boots caked in mud. And he kind of stomps um, over and... and clamp on him. We can't just, like, you know, fuss about forever. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's taking his time. Uh, and he sort of looks at you and he looks at it and he goes, so demonstrate how we're going to lock this. Uh, well, it locks from the outside. And I'm going to beat on the lock from the outside so that it looks like the lock is broken. And I will explain this to uh, the crew, and they will, uh, I'm not going to convince them not to open it. Hmm. <sighs> that is a shitty fucking plan. And he sort of nods and, and <laughs> it's your guy's plan. <laughs> walks away and he says, we'll be here at 4 a.m. Okay, 4 a.m. At the okay. pizza place? <laughs> no, at the bus. Okay. So you're both going to trip into the same little... She's so going to just... Spoon it up in there. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have unlimited storage, guys. <laughs> he, he, he looks at you... Or is it just you? Or he looks at you unimpressed, and he goes, it'll be enough for him and my sister. And then he turns uh, around. Okay. <laughs> and walks into the darkness. And that's all you got. Yeah, you're standing there with three pizzas and a dry rub. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go get the van where I left the pizzas and then drive back around the corner as if I'm just now showing up. And it's currently about midnight. <laughs> and I'll let him know that that's when everything's going down. You come back to everyone having the charcoal mask on their face. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you just feel it like lifting? Oh, sorry. Don't you just feel it like lifting the stuff out of your pores? You know, it's just like it starts to feel a little dry and then... All of a sudden, all of that toxic stuff just, like, goes out. Pizza's here. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Pizza. I forgot we actually ordered this. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Um. Yeah, I, I need to eat some. Uh, what happened? Or, sorry. No, I mean, I'm texting. So, I've, yeah, I said yeah, I was going to text you exactly what's. Yeah. They're texting yeah. again. I forget. They took a little bit of. They took a little too long at the pizza place. Yeah. They they, they didn't have it ready when I got there. That's what's hap- That's what happened. Oh. So I mean, what are you gonna do? Minimum Small towners. Late night pizza. Yeah. So I'm just gonna eat some pizza. Yeah, I'm just gonna sit there and eat pizza and watch a movie or radio or whatever they have. I, I will say. Provided. This at this point. You guys haven't slept since noon the day before yesterday. I mean, you guys, you went to shoot, you shoot, shot all through the night, came out, got the kids back, did all the stuff you did today, and now it's like midnight. So yeah. you guys are going to have some conditions if you don't catch at least a few hours sleep now. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to eat some pizza, take my face mask off, and then go to bed. <laughs> my plan. Yeah, Vic's probably so nodding off into we his We heard salad. that we need to be up again at like 3.45 or earlier in the morning. No, or? he has to no, go get them at 4, but that doesn't mean we have to be there. I'm just going to set like a just a, a vibration alarm and just like light, 
sleep with my Did face on the Did you tell us when you need to be up? <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm also setting an alarm for that. I'm not going to go with him, but I want to be no awake. No out loud alarms. No. <laughs> okay, it's not like a vampire can't hear a vibrating alarm, right? Through walls? It's a vampire, dude. I don't well, know. If it's just my alarm. If it's, if it's yeah, my Yeah, just alarm. your alarm. That's normal. <laughs> you could ask me to wake you up. Okay, that works too. I can't follow you, but I... Yeah, but I can shake your leg and you get up. Thank you. And that won't sound like anything weird. Cool. Sound like me moving around. All right, so you all pass out for a few hours of much-needed rest. Um, Given that you all only get half a night, you're not particularly well-rested in the day, but you do not suffer any negative penalties yet. Uh, Your alarm goes off at 3.45, as scheduled. Mm -hmm. I'll just mess with Mason's foot until he... Clearly wakes well, up. I'm just gonna. Uh, and I'm just holding my finger up to his mouth. Up to my mouth. Let him leave, and once he's left, I'm going to just get one of the water pistols and just sit by the door and listen very carefully. And maybe unseen sense if you think that's appropriate. You can you can roll it. Um... So you you know it's all is quiet. It's the middle of the night in the middle of nowhere. And I'm going to casually walk out towards the bus <clears throat> until I'm, like, around the corner from where anybody could see. And then I'm going to rush to the thing and open it up. And okay. just, like, do the same thing. Like, look around and, like, wave. Sure. So um, you do that. And uh, from the same spot in the forest emerges uh, the man you saw, the blonde man, short blonde man, with a, a sort of rusty wheeled cart. And on it is a uh, one very large wooden crate, hammered shut, uh, with a sort of this way up and fragile on the side. And uh, he's sort of pushing it towards the bus. What? It'll fit. Will Wait, it, you think I can't it, measure? Will it, will it fit? Yeah, it's, it is. It is large, and uh, but it is low profile. It's gonna, it's and it will fit. fit. It will it. That will take up solidly half of the storage phase. Okay. But it will fit. And uh, he begins the process of shoving it in. It it doesn't look nearly as difficult for him as it should, but <laughs> he does he does struggle a little. It is a really large, really heavy. I crate. will help him. Okay. So the two of you, uh, with your assistance, very with, easily. With with the with the physical show that I'm not comfortable and I'm kind of panicked. I'm going to hurry. And it's like, let's get, get in there. Like, <laughs> And so, Mason, you hear squeaky, rusty wheels on pavement and the sort of muffled sound of, of movement and the scraping of wood against metal. Mm-hmm. You can you can ascertain that this is happening. For your unseen sense, you very easily determine that there is a vampire life form out there. How many? Just uh, two. I, I'm aware for sure that there's two out there. Yeah, I'm already stretching the rules for you there, buddy. <laughs> but you got four successes, so. <laughs> you determine that there are two life forms there within your range. And then uh, the, uh, the man sort of looks you, looks you up and down and sort of scans the area, sighs. Like, <laughs> he sort of holds up a finger like, hang on a second, goes back into the forest, just taking his time, and uh, returns with the cart with another uh, identical box that uh, you and him shove into the storage compartment. And uh, on the back of it, he uh, he pulls out a large cloth suitcase, and <laughs> with a with a chagrined look, he uh, gives you a lazy sort of salute crawls in the suitcase, and uh, zips himself as much close as he can before looking at you. And, and he doesn't say anything, but he's sort of imploring you, like, help me out, buddy. Well, <laughs> stick his ass in the, <laughs> in the bus. And just like that, you have three vampires hidden on your tour bus. One of them is a pretzel right now. <laughs> I love how he apparently drew the short straw. <laughs> I only detected two. Yeah? I only detected two. 
Yeah, when you, with your initial roll. Okay. You can roll again now if you'd like. Okay. Or you can wait for me to tell you that there's three of them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just... So anyway, um, what do you do? Um, so I'm going to close the thing, and I'm just going to beat on the outside. All like, right. really loudly. All right, roll, roll <laughs> some attacks for me. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna actually like try to damage it. I'm just gonna try to be as loud as possible. W- would we hear <laughs> this? You definitely would all hear this. Are it, they? Well, <laughs> even though they're sleeping. <laughs> Everybody's sleeping but me, as far as I know. Oh, I thought everyone was awake. No, so just Mason hears it then. <laughs> and so, would I mean to do anything to like not actually attack it? Like uh, expression, I guess. Cool. How good expression. is your performance? Expression, <laughs> expression athletics, we'll call athletics. it. Athletics, okay. That's a... Or expression, mm. I guess, um, dex? <clears throat> yeah, because it's physical, dex. but you're not actually trying to damage it okay. with your strength. So, uh, yeah, we'll call it expression dexterity. <laughs> it's a weird role, but it's the most <laughs> logical. It's like a gymnast. It's some dice. Two. All right, you put up a good show. It sounds convincing. Okay. <laughs> After a couple of those, and then I'll just, like, <clears throat> leave it. All right, so I'm you not sort gonna, of... I'm not going to say anything. You, you sort of stand back. I'm not going to talk back. to the bus. <laughs> <laughs> you stand back, sort I'm of... so sorry. Satisfied with yourself, dust your hands off, and uh, when you turn to go back into the hotel, you see a figure standing in the parking lot between you and the hotel room. Which you immediately recognize as Charlie. Okay. And uh, Charlie, as you've seen him earlier today, tends to be sort of crouched over, and he has a, a sort of bad leg that makes him limp mm-hmm. very noticeably, and he stands, he favors one side. But he's standing there, evenly spread on both legs, with his hands in his pockets, and he, he says, Now, do you really want to do that, son? We had a bargain. <laughs> The, the bus is just broken. The bus is just... It, there's, there's, the, there's an issue with the compartment. I mean... Do not lie to me, Snack, he says. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I wish I understood what was happening. Everybody seems to... Oh, it's... The, the vampire has dominated mm. him. Maybe. Yeah, no, if he's that's what he called JD earlier. That's not that's not gonna just make his leg better. Charlie would never call JD snack. Yeah. That doesn't mean his leg's gonna be better. Maybe he's doing an illusion thing. Yeah, it's either it's yeah, it's it's either not Charlie or it's a dominated Charlie. Yeah. One of the two things. <laughs> now get your little bat and break the lock like we agreed. There's no way to really break the lock. You swore <laughs> you would. There's no way to really break the lock. It's just a handle. If I break, the, if I break oh the lock, God. the thing's just gonna come loose. I thought I could. I can't. Then figure something out. <clears throat> I'll find a key and break it off in the, and just any kind of key that'll fit up into the thing. Mm-hmm. I'll get it and then I'll break it off. <clears throat> Roll. I mean, you're, there, you're trying to break metal with your bare hands. Well, it's, so. a, it's a key. People do it on accident. But I'll, I'll roll whatever. Yeah. You could use the bat if something. Strength something? Yeah. Um, strength athletics. Two, three. Three. All right. You, you sell it. It goes, okay. I will hold this man hostage until we leave town. Pleasure doing business with you. And he walks back into the forest. Yeah, I thought that was too easy. <laughs> he was just going to let us throw him in a compartment and then murder the crap out of them. <laughs> now this is Charlie's fault. <laughs> <laughs> I think Charlie was trying his best to not get taken over by a vampire. Yeah, I think that was just like, I'm going to do that today. Well, he fucked that up, apparently. <laughs> I... I yeah, one job, Charlie. I'll bet you he was trying. <laughs> so, are you gonna tell us that Charlie is possessed? Yeah, that's point hey to guys, Charlie's you. possessed. <laughs> what? <laughs> Mason's very conflicted right now, and he doesn't know what to do. So I'm just doing blank face. Okay. Cause 
if we go out there and do something, Charlie will die. If we don't do anything, there's no guarantee at all that Charlie will live. So, okay. And I effectively drug him in. We effectively drug him into this. Then let's do it between here and Kansas City. Well, you're asleep. We can't, we're not part of this conversation. Are you going to wake us up? <sighs> we'll feel in between Kansas City and... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not gonna wake you up right now, because that would be I don't know suspicious. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna go back in and go to bed. <laughs> Can I sleep? Can you sleep? Can either of you sleep? I don't know if there's a mechanic for insomnia. <laughs> I think it's your choice whether you can sleep or not. I don't think I can sleep. All right, are you gonna do anything, or are you Very just gonna well. lay in bed? Um, oh, there ain't shit I can do till morning. How about resolve composure? Uh, and if I see him sitting, I'll be like. <laughs> yeah, so um, it seems that the vampire is holding Charlie as a hostage to guarantee his safety in, through the day. Uh, JD, unsure what to do exactly, has gone back and gone to sleep, and all of you sleep into the morning. Given that you all have not slept well, unless anyone set another alarm, you sleep well into the morning, say 10, 10.30. All right. And uh, is there anything else on the uh, crew schedule before heading out? Uh, no, not as much. <laughs> so we have a full day before we need to leave to go to wherever? Yeah, you could also leave today um, and just get there early. <laughs> so where are we supposed to take? They actually still don't know. I think we they should just their take... their homeland. Yeah. yeah, I think we just... I just think we take them take out them of the city. Us. Yeah, take so... them out of the city. Where are we going? <laughs> we are going to... The, the crew is going to Kansas City mm -hmm. next, but that is just a, a sort of stop on the way to St. Louis. But we're, we're going to Kansas City. Yes. Okay. So I think we should just go to Kansas City and get there yep. early, because that gives us a little bit more free time. We should have tried to find those werewolves. They would have loved to tear these guys apart. Well, it is a daytime. <laughs> okay. But no, Charlie is hostage so well sh <laughs> but but I think that I think that I don't Mason it. texted Charlie the plan no or filled him in on what happened so that now the vampire knows well if it knows how to use text messages Charlie locks like. his phone <laughs> but he's in Charlie's head that's true well then a 150 year old vampire wouldn't either yeah, I mean, I guess he didn't know what a bus was. So. Oh, the damn millennials. That vampire's also been in a tube. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well... The, the problem is, we could resolve this issue. I'm texting, by the way. Yeah, we could do this over text. Um, yes. The problem is, if we take action, presumably he can hurt or kill Charlie. I don't know how. I don't understand how any of this works. So we would need to either do what he wants or kill him so fast he can't do anything to Charlie. So, I'm I'm all for getting kiddie pools full of blessed holy water and dumping them into all of these suitcases, if anybody else is. I am still a proponent of, sorry, I'm still a proponent of doing what the vampire wants. It seems like it's the easiest solution, and then also, <laughs> we, I mean, I feel like that's the way that we all end up alive at the end of this. Definitely the way that Charlie ends up alive. Can we get out? Can I unseen sense to make sure it was actually Charlie, not like an illusion? Sure. Okay. Just like, do I do I detect werewolf? But we're not there yet, so continue, guys. Uh, 
I'm I'm with Wolf on this. Wait, one. didn't didn't Charlie say just approaching cool. a, a, a werewolf clan or whatever the hell they are? Isn't that a bad idea? Can't we can't just walk into their land? Hey, I'm I'm gonna grab him by the back of his shirt and yank him down. I don't care if I knock him on his ass. I'm pulling him back. Where are you going? But you don't even know where those werewolves are. You don't know what their territory is. You're just going to walk around the, wo- the woods and go, Werewolves, come here. <laughs> Good boy. Look, like, what are you going to do? Is, I get it. I'm terrified for my friend right now. And I don't think you understand what that means to me. As much as you might think you do. But I'm not going to trust in people I don't know even exist. So... We have two options right now. And if you want to leave, I'm going to leave you here. You're either going to come in here and we're going to pick one of the two. That's it. Unless you have a better idea. I'm not fucking rolling the dice on some vampire uh, werewolves that may or may not help my friend. Period. Well... I like my ideas, but we've had some good ones from everybody in here. What do you guys think is better? I think... Just work them with them, like Darla's suggesting. I think we should we should work with them. We should do what they want. And then I think... But we shouldn't be stupid about it. I think we should have some backup plans for if things go tits up. Okay. That That's my, that's my thoughts on the matter. Okay. So, I'll, maybe we start with that. Because... We can we can we can arm ourselves as best as possible. Yeah. I mean, we do have the ability to stock up on holy water and whatever that 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 vampires don't like. But is there? I think the best way that everybody's going to end up alive at the end of the day is if we just take these vampires and we dump them wherever the hell they want to go. Can we find out where that is? Presumably, we just have to talk to Charlie because Charlie is being hypnotized by that vampire man. Yeah, try texting Charlie. You might I, wanna... I'd, I'd rather not bring attention to the phone. Wait, are we talking out loud right now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah like... Wolf broke the seal it's on done. that. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of think he already knows, but you know. Well, we. Yeah. They're all in the van now. They're probably sleeping. Or I'm. <laughs> Unless we somebody we gives. We don't even need a bunch of holy water. We just need to tear open the compartment right now. That's all we need to do. That's three, one, two, three, gone. Yeah, but you're not thinking about the bigger picture here, JD. You're not thinking about whatever contacts this vampire has. If he just disappears off the face of the earth, yep. who after getting into contact with his friends, so, they're going to find us. I'm, I'm going over our option, not what exactly what I thought we should do. I'm just saying what that side of it is. You Listen. Wanna, you you want to kill him, you, you open the thing in the sunlight and... But we even know that the sunlight kills them. Well, I mean, do we even have? Do we have any idea if any of the shit that anybody is proposing will actually work? Do we? No. I've got Charlie's word on a couple things. He told us what can kill them, and that's for sure. Prolonged exposure to sunlight. Yeah, but they could just we could just dump them out, and then they could I don't know fly off. I don't even know what the fuck they do. Well, that's it. That's all we know. We know that will work, according to Charlie. Personally, I'm for just taking them. Yeah, I'm, i got to say, boys, I don't want to die. And I sure as hell don't want to be a part of trying to kill something that's that powerful and that can hypnotize mm-hmm. us. Because it could, no, and it could make us fight each other. Well, maybe. Well, that's not really my problem, to be honest. Maybe. It sure as shit could be. Maybe. It suddenly became our problem. It certainly became my problem. Maybe you could go try to find the wolves. I don't think he's going to leave very far from here. Because if he left here, he'd... I don't know how he has contact with them or whatever, but I assume he has to keep an eye on them. And so, if you can find them, 
you could establish a point between here and Kansas City where we could dump them and they could either be there themselves or contact whoever wants to be there after we let them out. We let them out. We let them walk free. We drive away. We let whatever werewolf pack there is tear them to shreds. All right. All right. Okay, but how do we even get into contact with Werewolf Clan? It's not like we can put a, a, I, a message up okay, on a board so somewhere. I can't do it. Confession time. Um, I don't... What do we call it? Wolf blood? I'm not that. But I picked up some stuff from being around Charlie. And I can't give a whole lot of details, but I can sort of just feel what type of supernatural beings are around. So if we drive around and I pick up on anything, I'll let us know. But that's as good as I can do. Well, if... if and I can tell you what kind they are, too, as long as I've seen them before. Then we're going to have to do some some distractions for whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that vampire, if he has Charlie, we got to keep Charlie in the dark. Somebody's got to got to distract that boy so that so that he doesn't catch wind. Because if he figures out that we're trying to contact werewolves and set them up, he's just going to murder Charlie. And then maybe even murder us. He could use Charlie to murder us. So, somebody's got to distract him. Here's the phone number. This is the Paranormal Society of Nebraska. I don't, either I go talk to Charlie, or you guys, or I come with you. Like, that's it. It doesn't, I need to go do something, and I'll take responsibility for this. I'll go talk to Charlie. But we got to find some way of finding. What? But if you call these people, they might be able to tell Charlie. you. They might be able to tell you where sightings of werewolves have been. We can I, at least... can't, I can't go look for them. I'll go. The number one person he's got an eye on is me. Now I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Mason, and we're gonna go find fucking werewolves. All right. Break. Cool. <laughs> so. <laughs> So we're not using the bus. We're using our car, and presumably the bus is leaving later today to go to Kansas City. I'm sure we can borrow a car from production. Yes. So. Um, well, I'll still just call up the Paranormal Society and try and at least somewhat narrow this down. And I will go by the <laughs> dark places nearby, maybe go visit the uh, Geo barn <laughs> that he trapped me in. And maybe while uh, Mason is calling Paranormal Society. I'm just going to Google werewolf sightings mm-hmm. and the city name. Nebraska. I'm going to Google werewolf sighting Nebraska right now. <laughs> Alright, well, first off the top, JD, you find Charlie almost immediately. He's actually um, sitting in the in the passenger seat at the front of the tour bus, just staring mm-hmm. out the window. Okay. Hey, so... Um, <laughs> This is probably not a great place to be on here. Maybe move him to the to the back. It's got it, the bus has got like beds, I assume potentially, or someplace better Long for Charlie. Seats. That's not directly next to a window, and people be like, "Who's that guy?" <laughs> is there any place on the bus? The Charlie no, doesn't. No, I mean, I mean, on the, like you is. Is there any place on the bus? Some X X. Oh yeah, character. there's. It's you are all are meant to stay in there while traveling. There's and, and beds for all of you in storage but, but space. Talking and, talking to Charlie, there's no response. But Charlie doesn't give any response now. Hello. <laughs> is anybody home? Nothing. If I touch Charlie, does he move? If like, if I just like push on him. When you push on him, uh, some attention comes to, to the gaze, and you kind of make eye contact. What? Uh, well, first, first you should probably move him out of the direct line of sight of other people, because they don't know who this is. This is not one of your crew? No, it's, it's not it's one of our crew. You might want to move him <laughs> back here, where he <sighs> won't be seen as easily. He gets up, and the body does struggle to keep up with the <laughs> movement that, that this mind is asking it to do. <laughs> additionally, additionally, 
Quick question. Where are we going? Did I not tell you? No. <laughs> he, he, he actually looks sheepish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we are going to a it funky is... town. <laughs> we are supposed to go to Kansas City. <clears throat> when, I, when I went to sleep, uh, it was a place called Massachusetts. Is that still the name? Uh, I mean, I, I, I guess yeah. I mean, that's a that's a that's a lot of space, but yeah, Massachusetts in general. You need us to get them all the way to Massachusetts. <laughs> Is that far? It's a drive. <laughs> it's a bit of a drive across most of one of the bigger continents on the planet. Where are we? Uh, we are in uh, the United States. Maybe you knew them as the colonies. Maybe you knew them as India. Maybe you knew them as... <laughs> <laughs> he collapses. The French territories. <laughs> yeah, he collapses on the first twin bed that you run across on, on the sort of side of the bus. And he puts his hands behind his head and he looks up at you. And he goes... So... Virginia? Uh, that's adorable. I mean, not exactly, but closer. So we are in the <laughs> south. Uh, yes, we are. No. I mean, <laughs> that is acceptable. So we can make the trip in about a week. I mean, <laughs> do I have like the schedule like on my phone? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Are we headed up that way at all? <laughs> Uh, in a week's time, you are scheduled to be in Chicago. Okay. <laughs> um, are we going up further that direction? The, the production does head that way. Uh, the end of the, the sort of later season or later episodes of the show are all on the East Coast in various places, but it's not for quite a while. Okay. So I guess I'm going to have like a little powwow with the vampire mind controlled werewolf. <laughs> about the production schedule <laughs> and United so States So you are geography. saying that you travel to different cities and then you stay there for several days doing nothing and then yes. return to traveling. Yes. But not in a linear route. No. Not in a linear route. These customs are very strange to me. That's the modern day. <laughs> What year is it? I'm assuming it's current year. It's current year. It's 2018. 2018. 2018. Sweet Athena, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of my sight. <laughs> leave me. To the door. I will leave. <laughs> <laughs> That, that made that whole last night conversation worth it. <laughs> so while that was happening, you all got in the car. Uh, I suppose you drove around. Uh, and you, Mason, called the Paranormal Society. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, this is Shelly with the Middle Nebraska Paranormal Society. Hey, Shelly. I, um, I was organizing a, a retreat for some friends. And uh, I needed to know if there were... Uh, any particular werewolf sightings? I, I'd like to have some trips out to the woods in those areas if I could. <laughs> Werewolves, huh? Ah, uh, you're one of those. You know, we're mostly like a ghosts and spirits type organization. You know, a lot of like suburban homes and private properties. Um, you probably should just Google that. But I mean, usually they always say sightings happen in, you know, big foresty areas like the Manaskia State Park, that kind of place. Thanks, Shelly. No problem. Bye. All right. <laughs> well, that was oddly specific. That was... You, you sounded <laughs> so <laughs> sad. <laughs> I'm going to see some werewolves. I just want to go and see some werewolves, you know, with my friends. Oh, you're one of those. Oh, you one of those. She was like, she thought you were a furry. <laughs> we're going to the state park. I'm going to pull up it up, pull it up on my phone. Hopefully it's not too far away. Uh, it's a little far. It's like a 40-minute drive, but 
You all can make it. Oh. So are you going to go with all of you as discussed? Yeah. I'll go back to pick up everybody and then we're all going to the state park. Yeah. Well, I definitely want to meet up with JD to figure out what the fuck we're doing. Yeah, right about the time you pull up, JD is exiting the uh, the tour van, the tour bus. <laughs> Ashamed. <laughs> hey, JD, so, we're going to go get some snacks. You want to come in? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go in. Well, first off, Charlie's in the bus. Yeah. I saw. Is I saw. Charlie... No, you just saw him leaving. Okay, is, I didn't see him. Is Charlie comfortable? Uh, I, I don't know. I Should we get him a crew pass? <laughs> just hang one on his neck. Should we inform somebody that there is a random man that they don't know on our crew bus? So well, you they're... are lacking a production assistant. <laughs> Does it... Can we, are we going to make up a Henry badge? Can we just look for a Henry badge? <laughs> Henry had a rough weekend. JD, does it seem possible to restrain him? I don't know how hard it is to restrain a barrel goof. <laughs> Who is secretly a vampire? I would assume <laughs> difficult. I don't know. I don't know if knocking him out would take away the... A mind yeah. fuckery that he has. I don't know any of that, so I, I don't know. But what if the production goes into our production, our van, and sees a random tied up man? <laughs> they don't know in well, there. Well, we wouldn't. <laughs> we wouldn't leave him that way. We would immediately solve our problem. If he, he is not a hostage anymore. Oh, he's a hostage. If he's tied up, he's not a hostage because he can't kill himself. I don't know what. Uh, I, he could break. I, he's a werewolf. <laughs> Nothing he we're gonna he do. Didn't, he didn't react to anything until I touched him. Okay. So I assume if we touch him too much, that yeah, All right. indeed, he will react. So here's where we're going. Where, where do we need to be if that doesn't work? Uh, Massachusetts is where they want to go. And How? then I had to uh, explain United States geography to a okay. vampire. How long do we have until we need to be in? The entirety of the states was, I guess, Virginia. How long do we have to be before we're in Kansas City? Uh, you, tomorrow, you're supposed to be in Kansas City by tomorrow evening. But you could leave today or tomorrow. So if we leave right now, we might be able to make it to Massachusetts if we absolutely had to. Absolutely not. And then no, we... <laughs> that would take like four days, dude. <laughs> no, what? That's a hell of a drive yeah. from Nebraska to Massachusetts. Okay, so you could okay if you drove nonstop for the next two days, you could get to Massachusetts. You definitely could not <laughs> get, get back. back to uh, yeah. the city. Yeah, to yeah that's, like, city that's like that's like that's like thirty so hours. So the only to say nothing of the mileage you'd put on the tour bus. So the only <laughs> option is well, the the chance would be to go to Kansas City. Yeah. And do our shoot there. <laughs> head up when we're headed up to Chicago to go past yeah. and then come back. Yes. Um, so or whatever we wanted to do in so, between. Then so here's what I propose. <laughs> right now. We go to the state park and do what we can. And then if that doesn't work, we continue mm-hmm. with our production schedule mm-hmm. and deal with this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's go shoot a couple scenes at the state park. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Michael is winking so much he looks like he's having a seizure. <laughs> uh if uh, Vic is probably going to have a little realization on the drive over, sure. Uh, probably, probably from somewhere in the back, he's just going to say, "You know, just thinking." Oh wait, wait, sorry. Are the vampires in the van we're using? No, you're using a what's called a passenger van. A passenger. Yeah. Before we go, is the, is the, is there like like I'm sure we have some kind of like the badges. I don't know whatever they print that with, like the the crew badges, like a crew pass. No, you don't. Like for a, a tr- for a traveling show, you really don't have crew badges. Everyone kind of knows everyone. Okay. You're, you're not going into any kind of facility with security, no. so no, no one in the crew has any kind of badge. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna just go. <laughs> I'm just gonna go. Like, is I'm gonna go back into the bus before we go. Is Charlie just still like sitting there, like 
Yeah, he, for all intents and purposes, open? looks... He looks like a corpse, honestly. I mean, he is... He's not is he moving. On a, is he on, like, a bed now? Or he's a on a bed. He's not is moving. He, is he lying down? He's lying down. But his eyes are open and unmoving. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to... They sort of blink intermittently. <laughs> I'm going to put a blanket... A pillow under his head and a blanket over him. Okay. <laughs> That's cute. But now he looks dead and covered. <laughs> <laughs> well... At least someone might see him and be like, well, he's asleep. His eyes open. <laughs> At least. Over him. Oh, okay. Blanket so over him. I see, I see. So he just looks like a corpse. <laughs> he's just under the covers. Yeah, his, his eyes blink very rarely just to keep moisture, but that's about it. <laughs> Makes I, so weird. I, when, I move him, when I move him, does he come to attention? No. You, you don't make a real effort to wake him, so no. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of move his head to the side. Okay. <laughs> like it's on something. Yeah, it, 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 it sort of slides over okay. like, like anyone sleeping very deeply would. Fine. <laughs> so uh, on the drive over to the to the state park, Vic is going to uh, Vic is going to kind of have a realization and just say out loud, "Guys, I'm just thinking out loud here, but uh drunk I think no, you said that this the, is a different car. They're this not is a different car. car? Yeah. Okay. This is a, this is the van and not the full bus. Okay. Okay. Put All right. Bus around everywhere. Uh, guys, just thinking out loud here, but so far we don't have any reason to think that the vampires are gonna want to hurt us. And if we do, hold on, hold on, wait. If we just tell them not to mess with anybody in the crew, and you know, don't eat people like i'm sure they can eat animals right like if we can I just, have no idea just set some ground Does rules like to tell them do you let's just set some ground rules with them to just make sure that it's for their benefit just to get them to massachusetts right i mean we are going there i'm just saying that's what, what i said in the first place it's just to, to, to let them do what they're gonna do and we'll just do what they want us to do and then they won't hurt anybody probably yeah. And make some contingency no, plans. No, I'm starting to see your side of things here. Like, I, I, I'm a, I gotta tell you, I'm a little bit apprehensive about going into the middle of the woods and finding werewolves. They may just eat us. They won't. Well, I don't know that. Well, That's not their there's problem. There's absolutely nothing to say that when we finally get them to Massachusetts, they aren't just going to eat us. Absolutely. That's why I say we do contingency plans. But no, but we, we're gonna meet. Okay, whatever. I'm fine talking to the wolves. I'm a, I'm for talking to the wolves. I agree with that. Yes. They were all in the. Van. So who's who's in the? If I don't go do stuff, it's gonna look suspicious. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'm I'm just going. I don't I don't have time for this shit. We gotta figure this out. So yeah, you all you all drive through the winding sort of dirt and gravel roads on on a rural state park and eventually there's sort of a pullover lane uh, where you know a, a one other car is parked and you've ascertained this is where you're supposed to hop out there are signs indicating trailheads and you know it's a so, somewhat um, hilly but but mostly just a dense forested area well Darla heaves a big sigh and steps out of the van <laughs> just, follows. He I'm doesn't just, want us to stay in a hot car. I'm just off into the woods. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm looking for tracks. Any, any, anything even remotely canine. All yeah. right, everybody, roll investigation. And Yay. if you have a supernatural search ability, then go for it. Can I use uh, Eye for the Strange? Maybe. Yeah. Nice. I have a specialty for tracks in investigation. Therefore, I'm going to try and use it. All right. Uh, one success. And Three. I'm also. One. So if I here's here's my question, my I unseen sense role involves investigation. May I also use my extra investigation die for tracks while using unseen sense, or is that a different thing? It's a different thing. Okay, well I'm the overall role for unseen sense is still better than tracking. So um, one, two, three, four. Four. All right. Four's the, the highest number. So, um, so uh, you all do a pretty good job uh, walking through the woods. You all sort of spot some broken branches and some, you know, trails or whatever. 
Uh, Mason, however, you you know a, a somewhat uncomfortable fact about werewolves, which is that they urinate to mark their territory just like actual wolves. No. <laughs> uh, and so you are uh, fairly certain when, after some time walking through the woods and, and taking a peek around, you find a small uh, little dirt path that veers off from the main course, and you catch a, the distinctive smell of, of territorial markings. Yeah. So you're quite certain with four successes that, that you are entering the territory of some werewolf here. Okay. Um, I'm just going to be like, we're probably entering their space now to everyone. And I'm just going to so walk. Sh- should we? Should we? I'm just going to walk with we? my hands visible <laughs> and make no attempts to hide myself. Yeah, Dove's going to lift her hand and say, Jesus Christ. Mason, I know ghosts exist now, so if you get me killed, I'm going to haunt you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going. Uh, JD's legitimately walking with his arms straight in the air. <laughs> All right. Roll me another uh, another investigation roll to you, follow the trail you've picked up. Follow the trail. And now you this, this like one, you would want to use your tracking. Sorry, I should say that in Vic's voice. You all look like a cult. If I want to apply willpower, do I do it now or do yeah, I? Yeah, you do it before that rolling. Is down. Ah, oh, shit. I'm applying one dice. Once uh, he gets back, or I could roll it now. Do you care? You go for it. Okay. Do, 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 do. One, two, three. Three. All right, that's good enough. You follow it quite easily. And again. Do I need to like turn off the Wi-Fi on my phone? Does that help? I'm not doing. I think anything. it's on his end, not ours. Yeah. I, it might be on our end. I'm not really doing anything. Getting it. Even idea. the computer downstairs is off, right? Well, I'm just gonna turn off the Wi-Fi on my phone just in case. I don't think it matters, but you know why not? All right. So. <clears throat> Uh, Mason, you su- roll three successes. Yeah. So uh, you follow the trail easily. Um, the the evidence you're following, the scents you're following, the tracks eventually leave the side trail and go into thick underbrush, but you soldier forward. Uh, roll me another one, please. Another investigation. One, two... Three, four, four. All right, uh, and the the trail takes a very unexpected turn uh, into a sort of rocky outcropping, uh, and it you almost lose it, but you you notice uh, a sort of scrap of of uh, fur and a little bit of, of blood up against one of the rocks, and uh, you figure that that must be the right direction, and it helps keep you on your path. You follow this like ridge until it gets taller and turns into a bluff and eventually you see in the side of the bluff uh, a sort of low opening into uh, a a brief cavern but there's light beyond and it it seems to turn into a bit of a gorge in the middle of this rocky mountain face sure so you go inside really not sure where this is all leading but all of you are still holding your hands up (laughs) clearly (laughs) at least gd is he's (laughs) Clearly Mm. trying to indicate that you're not a threat. And uh, as you get properly 100 feet or so into this gorge with the the sun beating down through the the cracks in the rocks that surround you, uh, from overhead, a bunch of shadows uh, appear as a bunch of men and women standing on the top of this gorge look down on you, and they all say, Halt, state your business. And that's where we'll end for today. No! No. <laughs> Maybe it could be some. It could be some sort of crazy militia out in the state park. He's mind control all these werewolves too. <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! Charlie. Yeah, if they start calling you snack, then we're fucked. Hey snack. Well, yeah, fuck. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for bringing your touchstone with you, John. Jesus. Uncanny Valley Cancer Cell is created and produced by Buckle Nagel and Stephen Pope. The players are Garrett Schmigel as Vic, Deanna Venable as Darla, Michael Morris as JD, Stephen Pope as James Wolfe, and John Tompkins as Mason. 
with Buckle Nagel running the game. Hunter the Vigil 2nd Edition is produced and published by Onyx Path Publishing. Find us online at Uncanny Show on Twitter and www.uncannyvalleyshow.com. Make sure you check out Wild Cards, Experience Pointers, and other Saving Throw Show productions on the Saving Throw Network. And hey, have a good night.